wonderful day this is. This is a day for your financial miracle. This is a day for you that I believe God it has some very special jobs for those who are out of jobs. This is a financial miracle program. So stay right there because the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you and you are going to receive a miracle. And I want to just share right from my heart a very personal, personal miracle that I've received from being obedient to God. I mean, it's probably, well, it is beyond the shadow of a doubt, the most unusual miracle I have ever experienced. So I'm going to share a personal testimony. I'm going to share a scripture. I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God because God is going to give you a miracle. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I believe God has a miracle for me today. I do. I believe he has a miracle with your name on it. Financial miracle, job miracle. So stay right there. Last February, I had a very dark, dark time in my life. My husband was not well. I'd gotten bad news about him. Our finances were down. We had had to cut back on some things. And I just felt, you know how sometimes you just feel depressed and defeated. I knew it was wrong. I knew it wasn't Bible but I really fought with those emotional things. And we were doing a big women's conference in Central America. So in this conference, we had a number of women who went with us from America. And of course, we had large attendance by Central American women. But we had a special night when we just made commitments to whatever God wanted us to commit to for projects. So I'm there that night to speak, and I'm down. I'm thinking, oh, who am I to speak to anybody? I, I'm just, I'm, I'm so weak in faith. And the Lord said to me, I want you to make a vow. I want you to give, now listen to me, listen to me, $60,000 from your personal account this year. Oh, I said, that's not God. God didn't say that to me. I don't have 60000 What would my husband say? What? This is craziness, and this is a dark time. I don't need a voice like this. I need encouragement. But it came to me very strongly. Would you make a vow? You don't have it, but if you vowed to give it, if I gave it to you, I could give you the greatest miracle you've ever received. So I went to that meeting, and I'm telling you what I did. I made a vow. I signed a card, and I said, this year I commit to $60,000 from our personal account, and I'm believing God to bring it in. I'm making a vow. Well, I went home, told my husband, I think he thought I was crazy, but he was positive. Now listen to me, this is a personal testimony. An artist came to our home from New Mexico, he and his wife, to visit with us, and we have a beautiful painting over our fireplace. He said, do you know that artist is very, uh, very high, very valuable at this time? I said, no, I didn't know that. He said, I could sell that painting for you for 20000 I thought, do it. And there was 20000 Oh, that was a third of my vow. And if I'd never put that out there, would I have received that miracle? Then he texted me and said, Are, do you have any more paintings by this man? Well, I said, we have one more, but it's not a very good painting. I sent him a picture of it on my phone. He said, I can give you 16000 for that. <gasps> Do you realize what I had? That was a big part of my vow. Now, listen to me. That was one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen, but that was not the end of it. <laughs> that was not the end of it. Because this summer, we had a big conference here in our church, a faith conference. I went home on a Saturday night after the conference. It was very exciting, very good, very strengthening in the Word. And Sarah called me. And, you know, I'm getting ready for bed. It's around 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. She said, Mom, uh, someone in the conference came to me, someone from out of our city, and said, I feel led to give Marilyn a personal gift. I don't want income tax credit of $10,000. I said, Sarah, would you please say that again? <laughs> and she said it. I thought, God, what are you doing? So that brought me up again to like $46,000. Oh, I only left, had 14000 to go. And how was it coming? Miraculously. And then in this timing also, 
we received, the ministry did, one of the largest gifts we had ever received. We had believed for years for a big gift like this, and it came in, in this timing, a miracle gift, and it came from Uganda. Who would expect the biggest gift they'd ever received to come from Uganda? That's craziness. You say, that's a third world country. Yeah, but it doesn't have a third world God. And that came in. Oh, oh, here I'm at 46,014 to go. And to, now I have to tell you, I am up to 55,000. And it has all come from people saying to me, all different places, and this has never happened to me. Never, never, never. I just felt led to give you 2,000 personally. I felt led to give you 1,000. And now I'm up to 55. I only have five to go. Now, if I had not made that vow, that faith step, would we have received the biggest gift the ministry had ever received? I don't believe so. Would I have given God an opportunity to bring miracle finances into my life? I don't think so. I believe God has such big things if we will listen to Him. Now listen to me. Right now, some of you are saying, oh, God can't do that. That's just you. You're God's pet. Let me tell you, that's faith. And I want you to call in right now. I want you to take this moment and call in with what you're believing God for. What, what do you need? What are you believing God for? This is a very, very unusual miracle opportunity. Are you believing for a job? Hey, are you believing for a certain amount of money? Are you about to lose your house? Are you about to go into bankruptcy? This is your miracle moment. Let me share something else with you. And I'll go back to vows because you say, well, is this scriptural? Oh, totally, totally. I have some good friends. They're in our church. Hard, hard financial times. He lost his job, went to work into, in another situation, couldn't make it, didn't do well, you know, they just went into almost bankruptcy, lost their house, lost everything. She had a job, but it wasn't a good job. And so we just stood in faith and we believed God. We believed God. And last week I took them out for dinner and in 24 hours, both of them received the biggest and best jobs they've ever had. They are so excited. It is a miracle. In 24 hours, they had a miracle turnaround. I'm going to say to you by the Spirit of God, I believe many of you are going to have a miracle turnaround in 24 hours. And I'm going to give you a scripture. Oh, yes, I want to give you a scripture. In 2 Corinthians 2.14, it says, Christ always leads us. God always leads us to triumph in Christ. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Let me tell you, why did God bless me like that? He blessed my obedience, my obedience of faith, but he also did it to give a fragrance of winning to you. That gives a fragrance. Well, if she can win, I can win. If God can do that in her life, why can't he do it in mine? Sharing about this couple that are my friends that have got two marvelous jobs. I mean, in 24 hours. What is that? That's a fragrance of winning. And let me tell you, that fragrance is coming out of the screen into you. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now listen, get on the phone. Get on our website and tell us what you want in a job. Tell us what your financial need is. And we're going to believe God and keep it short, keep it brief. We're going to believe God for your miracle. Why did God give me that scripture for those of you who are watching? Now vowing. I think when you vow, there is a special increase in vowing because ooh, you have nothing and yet you're saying, God, you do this, I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to step out in faith. Do you remember Hannah and 1 Samuel 1? Hannah could not have a child. Oh, she was so sad. And her husband, there was another wife, and Panina was just having babies all over the place. And Hannah couldn't have a child. <laughs> she was so depressed, so disappointed, and she made a vow. She went to a special time of prayer. And she said, God, listen to me now. If you will give me a son, I will loan him. I will give him to you all the days of his life. And God heard that vow. She had no child. God heard that vow. And she had a son within a year. She named him Samuel. <laughs> Samuel means asked of God. And what a son he was. 
my goodness, what a son he was. Because if you remember, he becomes a prophet. He anoints David to be a king. And there are two books in the Bible named after him, First and Second Samuel. Wow, awesome. Well, you say, that's wonderful, but is that the end of the vow? Oh, no. She had five more children, five more children. Woo! Did God bless her abundantly above what she could ask or think? When she made that vow and gave that son, that unlocked heaven to her. And so altogether, she had six children. And here, what a blessing to have the son dedicated to God that would literally rock the world in a sense. And David, you know, that was God's favorite king. David wrote most of Psalms. And Samuel is the one who anointed him to be that king. And Hannah is the one who made the vow. Now, I've been looking at vows and I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you to walk out in faith and make some vows. I looked at this especially in Ecclesiastes. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Wow. If we will walk out in those arenas of faith, there are miracles with our names on them. But folks, miracles don't come because you need them. Miracle, miracles come because you believe for them. It says he leads us to triumph in Christ. In First Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians 1, 24, it says all the promises in him are yea and amen to the glory of God through us, not to us, through us. You got to claim those promises. You got to speak them. You got to believe them. You got to hold on. You cannot just be lackadaisical. Lackadaisical. Faith is strong. And I'm going to be back with greater faith, greater miracles for your life. You need to go to Johannesburg, South Africa with Sarah and me for the most blessed time of your life to minister. It will be so awesome and you can get your brochure today. Is that right? That's right. Call or get on the website for the information. And we have an additional opportunity, yes. Mom, uh, for an excursion to Cape Town to see a safari as well as Robbins Island where Nelson Mandela was. Um, absolutely amazing things that are in Cape Town, that's an additional excursion. But the primary thing we want to encourage you with here is our ministry opportunities in Johannesburg. We're going to be ministering at nighttime as well as a Saving Moses opportunity. This is a life-changing trip and you don't want to miss out. Mom, how can they come? They can come and get the brochure, but you could also scholarship someone to go and a group of you could get together and scholarship your pastor and totally bless him and change his life. We want to hear from you today. God has a special word for you. And I know many of you, probably most of you, are needing a financial miracle. You need a miracle turnaround. You need a miracle breakthrough. And it's going to have to come from God because all your circumstances are so negative. So listen now. The Holy Spirit wants to speak a special scripture to you. It's in 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, Since we all have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and speak. You know, folks, I believe God is putting an anointing of faith on you, an anointing to believe him. And how you respond to that is you say, I believe that, but you also speak it. So you can believe it and not speak it, or you can speak it and not believe it, but you've got to have the two together. Say, I believe and I speak. 
God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to say it again. Say, I believe and I, be, and I speak. God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So he's supplying all of your needs. Get on the phone, call us and just tell us briefly, briefly, what are those needs? What are you believing for? What did you speak and believe for today? Tell us about the job, what kind of job and do it quickly. Get on the website. But folks, we want to join our faith together. It says, since we have the same spirit of faith, I have a spirit of faith. You have the spirit of faith and we're believing and we're speaking and God stopped this program to minister to you in a financial time that is really serious for you. Very crushing time, but a time for God to do a miracle, a great, great miracle. Now I looked at another vow because we've been looking at vows and I looked at Jacob Jacob made a vow in Genesis 28. And this is when he has blown it badly with Esau, lied, gotten the birthright, has to run for his life. So, you know, spiritually it's kind of a downtime, but he's in a process of learning. And I have really learned this. Faith is a process. You don't just jump here, there. You process and you learn to believe God a little more, a little more, confess what he says a little more. So he says to God, if you will bring me back, he said, I want to vow that I will tithe to you. He made a vow. Now let's watch him because you say, well, he doesn't have anything to tithe. I mean, he's poor as a church mouse. You know, he, he's down there without his mother, his father. Esau wants to kill him. And so he meets his future father-in-law, Laban, and Laban cheats him changes his wages, gives him the wrong wife and makes him work 14 years actually for Rachel. So you say everything is down, but watch, he made a vow. And see a vow brings great increase in finances. You can say what you like, it brings great increase in finances. So here he is, he's got two wives, a lot of children and God speaks to him and says, I want you to leave but he's not going to leave poor. He's not going to leave poor because when you vow to God, it has the power of increase in it. I think the greatest increase, that's my opinion. So God gives him a dream <laughs> and in the dream, he said, lift up your eyes and he lifts up his eyes and he sees ringed, uh, spotted, speckled cattle and they are mating and God shows him that Laban had told him, you can have all the spotted, speckled, striped cattle, which weren't very many. But God shows him, if you put up these stakes at the watering trough, that's usually where they mate, what they see is what they will bear. Oh, that is a revelation. And see, God gives revelation and vows. It's so unusual. So he does it. And there are so many speckled, spotted, striped cattle. And he leaves loaded, loaded and he is a man who made a vow to tithe to God. Well, God doesn't want little tithes, he wants big ones. So he blesses us and blesses us and brings increase into our lives. Now listen, you're watching and you're saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can have faith for that. Marilyn, you stretch us in faith too much. No, I don't. I want you to pick up the phone and call. Listen, God doesn't have pets, he just has bigger believers. And God wants you to believe big. So call, tell us what the, the need is that you're believing for, keep it brief. Get on the website if you have to do it that way. Tell us the kind of job you're gonna believe for. And we believe this is a miracle program hmm, for finances and jobs. Last night, I was in our church service. I've been praying for a man in our church. He's an accountant. He lost his job a year and a half ago. And you know, nothing has gone together. Nothing has gone together, but we're just standing in faith. Oh, we're standing in faith. We're praying, believing God. I went over to him. He said, well, I have a job. He said, they're checking my references, but I got the job. Oh, a breakthrough. And he said, it's really a good job. 
another man. I've been praying with him for a job and he got an increase four times what he made in the other job. Folks, you can hang your head and sing the blues or you can get hold of faith. God opened this section of this program with 2 Corinthians 4, 13, that we have a spirit of faith. You don't have a spirit of unbelief. You have a spirit of faith. You have a spirit of faith. If the enemy says it won't work for you, you tell him to shut up in Jesus' name. And you get on that phone and you quit putting it off and you tell us what you're believing for. Or you get on our website. We're going to stand that this is a miracle financial day. Vowing. It's so key. I want to talk about another one in the Bible, and this is Jonah. You know, Jonah vowed a vow, and I don't know what his vow was, but evidently he vowed he would do whatever God wanted him to do, and then God told him to go to Nineveh, and he changed his mind. I'm not going to Nineveh. I don't want to preach to Nineveh. Those Assyrians, they come in here and kill us. They're cruel, and I don't want to go to Nineveh. And so he ran away from God, and if you remember, God knew this man had a vow. <laughs> he ends up in the belly of a fish. God prepared a big fish and he ends up in the belly of the fish and he said, I will pay what I have vowed. I'll do what you want me to do. And that fish, I think this is a very unusual fish, evidently it swam to the shore to get him to Nineveh and vomits him out and he goes into Nineveh and he preaches and the whole city comes to God because that man believed God that if he would keep his vow, God could do anything. Folks, vowing is very, very important. It's very key. When I read in Psalms, it talks, it says, I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of the people, I will do it. David knew how to make vows. He knew how to prosper. He was an extremely wealthy man. He laid up most of the wealth that built the temple. When Solomon got ready to build the temple, he didn't have to beg for money because his father had gotten it all together. His father very wealthy, vowing. Folks, be, obedience here is very, very key for us. And I shared how God spoke to me to do a $60,000 personal gift. I, we didn't have that kind of money. No way, no way. But I started, I said, I'll do it. And God began to bring it in and bring it in and bring it in. Now I'm at 55,000. Well, you know that 5,000 is just a picnic. It's just on the way in. I'm sure it will come in ways that will just shock me and excite me. And the largest gift this ministry has ever received came in in this timing. But would it have if I hadn't made a faith vow, if I hadn't moved in obedience? I don't think so. So I want to encourage you today. I believe God has something so miraculous working for you that is beyond what you can imagine or expect. He's got a miracle with your name on it. And so I don't want you to be depressed. I want to just pray for you right now. Father, I pray for every person watching this program who's depressed and down over finances. Looks like there's no way out. They don't have jobs. Just everything is caving in. I am speaking miracles into their lives right now, right now at this moment. They will say on this date, I got a miracle from God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to hear about your miracle. Yes, I do. You're going to get your miracle. You better let me know. Put it on a letter, put it on our website because God is going to work it through this timing in your life in some of the most unusual ways you've ever known. I tell you, the best days are ahead for Christians who will walk in faith. I don't believe because there's dark times, recession times, that that applies to us. I believe, folks, in these kind of times, God shows up and shows off. Let him show up and show off in your life. Call us today. We all need miracles. And I want to share a miracle of a car with you that happened to me some years ago and has absolutely stimulated my faith to believe for cars for others. My husband sowed a thousand dollar seed when we just had a very small church and we were saving that money for a car for ourselves because our car was a wreck. So he felt led to sow it and it frightened me honestly. But you know, what could I say? He did it. And he said to me, Marilyn, don't worry. He said, God told me to do that. He will provide us a car. 
And so several months later, somebody borrowed the old car we had and wrecked it. So we have no car, no money, but we have faith in Jesus. And within like a month, a month, John Osteen came to our church. We didn't know him. And he looked at my husband and he said, I see the letter C-A-R over your head. Do you need a car? And <laughs> listen to this. My husband said, well, kind of. Hey, we're desperate. We have people picking us up to take us to church and we're the pastors. But he received an offering that morning and God gave us a beautiful car. Now, let me tell you from that time on, I've had miracle cars over and over, but I love to pray for cars for other people because when you have faith for something, then it overflows. It has a great ripple effect. So I've prayed for people for cars all over the world, third world countries, all kinds of places, and I've seen miracle provisions because he is our Jehovah Jireh. He sees ahead and he has a provision for us. So I want you to believe today for a special miracle for your own life. I know that every one of you watching me needs some special provisions, maybe a car, maybe a house, maybe finances, maybe a job, but I have found that there is provision for your vision. And Sarah and I have put this together with special teaching for the provision God has for your vision, your special need. And then we also have put a booklet in here called Provision for Your Vision that you can speak the promises for your need every day and listen. So what are you doing? You're seeing, you're speaking, and you're hearing. And what does that do to you? It builds your faith. And everyone sending a gift of any size this month, we want you to have this. Really, to me, this is a must for you. And now you're going to watch exactly how to get it, but don't put it off. This is your day to have a breakthrough. You can experience provision for your vision. This eye-opening resource contains two breakthrough teachings as well as a 22-page booklet filled with faith-building nuggets of wisdom. It's our special thank you when you sow a seed gift of any size to help keep this kind of transformative teaching coming to you and others. And if you can share a seed gift of $77 or more, we want to rush you our financial breakthrough bundle filled with some of the most powerful prosperity teaching we've ever produced. The financial breakthrough bundle includes provision for your vision, plus millionaire faith, soul prosperity, faith for your finances, secrets of the seed, and the combination CD booklet set, Seed Secrets. Call or click right now to share a gift and receive these life transforming teachings. Get the financial breakthrough bundle and get ready to step into your place as a child of the King.